How do crystals form? by Kate O'Donnell. Crystals are solids. They are special because their molecules, atoms, or ions fit together in a repeating pattern. The repeating pattern creates three-dimensional shapes, such as cubes and rectangular prisms. Crystals form in three ways. Crystallization from a liquid, crystallization from a vapor, and when water evaporates from a solution. During crystallization, either a liquid or a gas becomes a solid. All minerals are crystals because all minerals have molecules or atoms that form a repeating pattern. Within the rock cycle, minerals form when magma cools to become an igneous rock. Igneous rock, like all rock, is made up of minerals. Minerals form from cooling magma in three steps. First, during nucleation, a few molecules or atoms approach each other and form a microscopic shape to start the pattern that will grow the crystal. Movement of molecules and atoms within a liquid is possible because atoms and molecules can flow around each other. During the second step, the crystal grows as molecules or atoms are added to the pattern. This process is both slow and fast at the same time. To grow just one-tenth of an inch per day, a crystal has to add hundreds of layers of molecules and atoms every second. The third step, termination, happens when the growth of the crystal stops. Crystals will grow until they run out of space or molecules. The largest crystal ever found was 59 feet long and 11 feet wide in Madagascar. It was a barrel, similar to the barrel shown here. The arrangement of a crystal's molecules or atoms determines the shape and color of the crystal. For example, graphite and diamond are both made up of carbon atoms, but they look very different. Quartz crystals all have the same shape, but they are different colors because of impurities. Impurities are the wrong atoms in the crystal's atomic structure. Rubies and sapphires are both corundum minerals with different impurities that change their color. In addition to impurities, a crystal may have other defects where the pattern of their atomic structure is interrupted. Vacancies are empty spaces where atoms should be in the pattern. Interstitials are places where an extra atom squeezes into the pattern. Dislocations are places where atoms are pushed out of place within the pattern. Igneous rock forms when magma melts. It is full of crystals, but these crystals don't look like cubes or rectangular prisms because they didn't have space to grow. You may even need a microscope to see the crystals in an igneous rock. Crystals can also crystallize from vapor. For example, high in the atmosphere, water vapor, a gas, will get so cold that it becomes an ice crystal without transitioning to liquid water first. Like other crystals, ice crystals have repeating patterns of molecules. You can see these patterns in individual snowflakes. While ice does form crystals, a block of ice is polycrystalline because it does not have one crystal structure. Instead, many crystals are jammed together at different angles. Rocks are also polycrystalline. Ions form crystals when they are in solution with water and the water evaporates. As the water evaporates, the positive and negative ions come together to form a crystalline structure. For example, halite is made up of sodium and chlorine ions. Another name for halite is table salt. If you look at table salt under a microscope, you will see its cubic crystalline structure. Calcium carbonate is another crystal that forms when water evaporates. In caves, calcium carbonate forms stalactites and stalagmites as water drips from the ceiling. Minerals are also naturally occurring, so humans can't create them. Scientists have grown crystals in their laboratories that aren't minerals. This picture shows a cubic zirconia ring created by scientists. Understanding the similarities and differences between minerals and crystals will help you understand the composition of rocks and minerals on Earth. The end.